thank you. Let me see if I can work the technology. Those of you who were here at the beginning saw my artwork, which is what I consider to be my research. Um, Playmentworld.net. And uh, I think those of you who, who saw the piece would agree that uh, what I do as an artist really, I think, conforms to a sort of typical definition of uh, pure research. It's very speculative. It's esoteric. It's obscure. Uh, but I also teach at a large public university. And so I've been very interested in finding a way to apply the things that I do as an artist and as a researcher uh, in a way that is applied in general, maps onto the real world for students in some way, and is accessible. And uh, the most recent formulation of that is a class uh, that's been developed called Writing with Video. Uh, by the way, also available on the network at writingwithvideo.net. So uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about writing with video, sort of focus a lot of my comments over the next few minutes on this course. Um, and so the beginning point is, what is writing with video anyway? Uh, writing with video is a class. Um, it's both an undergraduate class, Art 250 on this campus. Um, we run multiple sections of that each semester, usually four to five sections, somewhere in the neighborhood of 100 uh, undergraduate students. I teach a graduate section where I train graduate students who then um, I call from that pool and recruit uh, instructors for the undergraduate section uh, from the graduate group. Uh, one of the things that makes uh, writing with video a, a, a little bit unusual is that it's an art class, but it's also um, an advanced composition course. It's in other words, a writing class. It's a general education course. And these are the kinds of things that uh, we focus on. Um, uh, it's not really explicitly about video. Video is a little bit sort of like a Trojan horse. Um, students come into the class because they think they're going to get to make movies. Uh, what they discover is that there's been a little bit of a sort of benevolent bait and switch. And uh, actually, they're going to be involved in a much bigger project. And things like, uh, what does it mean to research the world? What does it mean to engage in a, in a form of inquiry? Um, what does it mean to think creatively? What is design thinking? What is a design process? What is a creative process? Um, it's actually something that's fairly explicit and can be taught to a really diverse range of students. And so this is something that's really at the core of the curriculum. It is about composition, um, but it's interesting, that word. Um, uh, in an academic culture and in a culture that comes out of the traditions of writing, um, uh, people often assume that composition is about writing. But composition is actually a term that all kinds of people use. Uh, it's used in the world of music. It's used in painting. Um, they're all um, different forms and definitions of composition. And so we, we try to sort of expand students' notion of what that word might mean. It's obviously about literacy, uh, particularly media literacy, but really sort of that question of what does literacy mean at this particular historical moment? And clearly that's about more than the technologies of ink and paper. Uh, students do a lot of writing, but they don't write essays. It's really a sort of process-based writing to learn sort of format. Um, one of the things that I bring into the, into the class from my background as an artist is that um, artists do a lot of self-reflection. And actually, that's, I think, an important part of the creative process. And it's also an important part of you know, being a citizen of the planet. So there's actually a component built into the curriculum. Um, the idea of engagement, in other words, if you're curious about something, engage that subject. Um, it, you can go to the library. You can go on the internet, uh, whatever on the internet means. Um, 
But you can also simply engage the subject. Get out into the world and talk to people. Go places. Um, that's what writing with video students do as well. We do a lot of critical thinking. We do a lot of analysis of work that students do. They analyze and critically engage the work of their peers. We look at a lot of media and uh, we critique it. Finally, it is about media authorship. Students do get to actually make videos. Um, I'm going to show you uh, an example of an early video that um, a student by the name of Pocket did. It's two and a half minutes. Uh, what I want to preface this with is uh, the fact that most students taking this course are not art students, and most of them have not made video before. And so this is an earlier video, and you'll see that the craft is pretty rough. But I think that the ideas that are being engaged are pretty important. What is literacy to you? Uh, I probably think immediately of just the ability to, uh, to, to read one's spoken language. What does literacy mean to you? Uh, being able to read uh, printed things. What does it mean if someone is illiterate? Um, that they lack the ability to discern their spoken language on paper. Did they lack the ability to communicate effectively? Um, no. I, I, there are probably cultures that don't have a written word but have a spoken language. What about, people communicate. What about here in Bumfuck, Illinois? I have a feeling you it, uh, it reduces one's ability to hear. Can you say bump up? So is being able to read mathematical equations in, included in literacy, or could it be? Um, it could be. Like, I think, uh, to think that you're literate, like, in languages. Yeah, because you have to be able to look and see the symbol of a two, uh, or an addition sign or something, and be able to interpret what that means. So there is a level of literacy. Do you think you can read something that is not written word, like a video? Uh, I think you could interpret it. And I think that would be a form of reading. You, you read facial expressions and, and you read body movements. So, yeah. Do you think that literacy can uh, be involved in more than just um, visual and just writing? Do you think that you can be whether in oral or textual or... Oh, absolutely. Movement? Yeah. Sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. And there's language, all sorts of kinds of language that we can use. And we do. Um, you know, we use body language. And so we use glances. We use, you know, what we do with our eyes, um, what we do with the tone, you know, how musical, you know, we make yeah. what, we, what we express. So sure, I think so. Do you think that literacy can be used as a weapon? Okay, so that's what yeah. video is, writing with video is. So the next question is, if that's the what, then so what? Why are those things important? Well, I mentioned this a little bit earlier. Uh, this may not seem like a big deal to those of you who function outside of academia, but within academia, this is a big deal. <laughs> um, composition is a bigger activity than just writing. Writing is a subset of that, and if we're in the business of training the leaders of the next generation, then I think one of the fundamental questions that academia needs to ask itself is, are we training, are we training writers or composers? Are we training people to write? Or do we want to train them to communicate powerfully? Um, and how you answer that question sort of determines what you do next. Um, also, there's oftentimes this assumption that there's an, an equal sign between rhetoric and writing. And uh, clearly, that's not the case anymore. It never has been. Um, and to some extent, even when you, when you talk about research within academia, particularly in a lot of disciplines, there's this assumption that um, the process and the outcome is written. And clearly, uh, that doesn't map onto the historical moment anymore. Um, most students live in a world that's uh, densely constructed. Um, and based upon all kinds of uh, electronic mass media. Um, screen culture is, um, as the, even the previous uh, presenters illustrated, a big part of the world. Um, electronic social networks. 
uh, like YouTube, Facebook. Hello, Twitter. Um, you know, and those are, excuse me while I drink a little bit of water. Uh, those things are uh, dismissed in a lot of quarters, but uh, for you know, those people who are dismissing those, um, those networks, I have two more words for you. Egypt and Tunisia. <laughs> and those of us who witnessed what happened this past spring and how that happened and how people communicated uh, and organized and um, persuaded. I think it's, it's clear that um, propaganda and persuasion and rhetoric has clearly come off the page and it's in an electronic realm. And again, if we are training the leaders of the future, then maybe that should be a part of uh, the training that they receive. Uh, they aren't just social networks, they're knowledge networks. <laughs> They're places where people participate and empower themselves. Um, and so that's the so what behind writing with video, and that's really the, the rhetorical argument for why I think it's important. Uh, OK, so now what? Um, well, I, you know, I've sort of made all these points already. It's probably time to recognize the distinction between writing and composition. Uh, it's probably try, time to train every student to research, inscribe, and compose across multiple media. And it should just, should just be taken for granted that that's what you do. Um, that's part of your training at a university. Um, and it's, it's important to study things, and uh, that has real value. But I think in a perfect world, students uh, should be in a culture where they study and make. To me, that seems to be the perfectly complete world where you can study things, but you can also make media. Um, so now I'm going to go back from uh, application and education to research and art. And I'm, um, I'm not sure whether uh, this is going to work out because of the audio uh, with the video. But I wanted to talk a little bit about Ninth Letter, which is another project that I've been involved in. I was a co-founder of this project, which is it exists as a literary magazine that has a high design component. Um, and it's a collaboration between the School of Art and Design and the Department of English, particularly the graduate uh, program in creative writing. And in addition to the magazine, uh, we have a website, writingwithvideo.com. And that actually uh, is a place where we feature a whole different set of electronic con uh, content outside of the magazine. It's really about a place where we can feature the kinds of literary forms that are, aren't supported by the technologies of ink and paper. And uh, one of our interests has been, um, what does the literature begin to look like when it begins to be a time-based medium like maybe video? And one of the more interesting projects that I was involved in was a collaboration with Richard Powers who um, many of you are probably familiar with his name. He's an English professor on campus, and I think he's probably one of the most important and the most interesting living um, American novelists. He's brilliant. If you want to read something um, that's really both uh, profound and poetic, I would recommend any of his books. But he very generously uh, worked with uh, myself and some colleagues and grad students in the School of Art and Design, and we took excerpts from five of his books, and we did sort of video translations of those pieces. And uh, I'm hoping to show you a short four-minute clip from uh, Galatea 2.2. Um, just a real quick setup on Galatea 2.2. It's my favorite book, by the way, um, of his. Uh, there are three main characters in Galatea 2.2. One of the characters is um, a computer scientist uh, who works on constructing computerized neural networks. And <clears throat> the other, um, another character is an English professor whose fictional name just happens to be Richard Powers. And they become embroiled in a debate over what is the distinction between machine intelligence and human consciousness. And the way that they decide to sort of tease out this argument is to actually make something. 
And what they make is a computer program that they begin to teach. It's, um, it's a learning machine. And they begin uh, by, it starts as a blank slate, and they begin to teach it language. And they begin to teach it words and definitions of words. And those words become sentences. And the sentences become longer statements. And those become ideas and concepts. And eventually, um, the concepts start to become self-generated questions. And that uh, hopefully will make this video a little more sensible. Dogs bark. Birds soar. Night falls. You vanish. Father hugs. Baby cries. Fish, fish sky shines. Hope shines. Forests floor. Laugh, efforts, combs, loneliness. What seas, what shores, what gray rocks, and what islands. Tuning forks, pitchforks, forked tongues, and the road not taken. Resistors, capacitors, baiters and switchers, alternating current, alternate lifestyles. Wool and linen and damask. Finches and feeders, bats and banyans, mites and moats. Lint, lintels, lentils, lent. Insect galls and insecticides, mating for life or for a fraction of a minute. The Great Wall. The Great Wall, the Great Wall and the Burma Road, the Great Wall and the Burma Road and, 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 and the Iron Curtain, and, and revenge, and forgiveness, and contrition. Grace and disgrace and second chances and how the earth looks from space. But where, where should my soul repose? But where should my soul, my soul repose? Um, that's all I have, so thank you for your time and um, your attention.